Hey guys, Harrison, we're back at it once again for a brand new video for you, and welcome to part three of our team review series. And for many people, this is the one you've all been waiting for. Yes, I have more caps to cover my hair. Oh, sorry, the McLaren team review is what you're probably really looking for here. So, this is a big one actually. A lot of people have been asking me about McLaren season, a lot of people have made McLaren based comments um, in the first two episodes of this series so far. So, um, this is going to be a very interesting episode. I think this one's this is the one that could cause a lot of interesting back and forth debate like comments. So, I'm actually quite looking forward to this one. So, without further ado, let's break down McLaren's season, starting with their technically lead driver, Jensen Button. P.S. Thanks to Mayor for the Christmas gift. It's, as you can see, it's uh, rather awesome. Jensen Button's year was quiet yet productive. He didn't get off to the best starts. He only had 68 first half points. But overall, he did have three wins, a pole position, six podiums, and 14 times he was in the top 10 for point scoring positions. However, he did suffer four retirements. And unfortunately, most of them weren't his fault. The, the Monza blowout obviously was the car, and he had a knack of getting involved in some incidents that, you know, that weren't really his fault. Having to deal with an angry Kimi Kobayashi can do that to you sometimes. Like I said though, he did score 120 points in the second half of the year and had much better results in the second half of the year. Including two race wins, a second place and the last four races having a fifth, fourth, fifth and obviously the, the drive in Brazil, his best drive of the year to close out the year. I don't know about Jensen Button but I just don't think he came across to me as a guy who could win the world title this year. I don't think he ever, you know, shone as a guy that, you know, could spring an upset or as a guy that, you know, could realistically challenge Vettel, Alonso or Hamilton. I don't think anything about him was spectacular this year until the drive in Brazil. I mean, that, maybe that's just me. He is still, I think, the king of changeable conditions, but maybe his window is starting to close. Maybe it was Lewis Hamilton's influence on the team taking all the headlines away that may have unsettled him. I don't know, but next year is going to be a very, very interesting year for Jensen Button. You know, when you think about how he's going to be team leader with Sergio Perez on board as well. So, Jensen Button in 2013. A very, very eye-opening year ahead. Got to be very careful what I say here. I could easily end up setting off World War Three within the comments if I say one bad word about Lewis Hamilton. Because I know what, what people's audiences can be like when it comes to these things. But all in all, Lewis Hamilton was excellent this year. He was much more consistent than what he normally was if you take into account how bad and inconsistent his reliability-wise his car was, which I'll get to in the next section. But he had four race wins, only Vettel had more. He had seven podiums. He led the league in pole positions with seven, and 14 times he was in the top ten. But you can never win a world championship if you're retiring six out of 20 times. That's 30% of the races Lewis Hamilton failed to cross the finish line. That's just not going to get you a world title, ever. At, at times, Hamilton and the McLaren combination looked unstoppable. And... What, even when the car wasn't the best against the Red Bulls later on in the year, Hamilton constantly raised his game to make himself competitive. Towards the end of the year, he looked like he was going to win two or three races towards the end, but then he was robbed by other retirements. 75 points he lost this year from race-leading positions, down to either mechanical retirements or Nico Hülkenberg's unfortunate bump to the side during Brazil. Not to mention the Maldonado incident, numerous bad McLaren pit stops. You, you get the point. Hamilton, you could argue, was robbed of at least a decent shot at the world title. And maybe that's why he left. Maybe he thought the grass was greener elsewhere. We'll have to wait and see whether that's true or not. But overall, a very good season from Lewis Hamilton. It just wasn't his year. Lewis Hamilton, extremely unlucky. Oh, McLaren, where did it all go wrong? 
So before I really start this, I'm going to say the overall grade, I'm deducting one subgrade on the overall team due to the pit stop errors they had throughout the year. Simply put, if a driver can't rely on his pit crew, what else can he rely on? That's that's inexcusable for it to happen so many times to such a world-class team time and time again throughout the year. Second of all, the mechanical retirements, there are at least three of them I can think of off the top of my head towards the second half of the year, cost McLaren big. Easily cost them second in the Constructors. It could have easily cost them a shot at Red Bull to, you know, to win the Constructors title. Not to mention, they probably single-handedly screwed Hamilton out of a decent title charge as well. Because I'd say McLaren had the best car for more of the season than any other team in Formula 1 did. Red Bull kept it close, Ferrari had good race pace, but McLaren were constantly sticking their car at the front or near the front. And, you know, they weren't getting you know, the, the maximum possible out of it. I mean, you look at an example. Like I said, Hamilton led the league in polls with seven of them. Yet he only won four times this year because he had two taken away from him due to mechanical issues. And ultimately, that's what I think that's what cost McLaren in the end. They blew it. They blew it on, on mechanical retirements and, and, you know, pit stop errors. And I'm not going to criticize them too bad because at the end of the day, they're only human. But ultimately, when you put it all together, it probably cost McLaren a shot at both titles. And that is not good enough for a team of their prestige and quality. Anyhow, let me know what you think of the McLaren season, Hamilton, Button, the car itself. In the comments below, this is going to be an interesting one, I can tell already. And I'll catch you guys on Tuesday, I think, for the Lotus team review, which is going to be very interesting as well. I've been Harrison01. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Sayonara.